Kia ora koutoua. Kotoko ingoai Kate Devaney. I'm one of the educators at Aratoi Wairarapa Museum of Art and History. This Anzac Day I'm sharing with you a story of a special donkey and her soldier friend who saved many lives together at Gallipoli during World War I. In our collection at Aratoi, we have a bronze sculpture by King Kendall that also commemorates the work of these heroes. Thanks for listening and I hope you enjoy the story. Rolly the Anzac Donkey, written by Glyn Harper and illustrated by Jenny Cooper. Hello, my name's Roland, but most people call me Rolly. I haven't always worked here on this farm. For a time I worked at a place called Gallipoli. I met a man there from New Zealand who was very special. We worked as a team to help rescue soldiers who'd been hurt in battle. I was born in a village in Greece where my parents worked on a farm. When I was nearly a year old, a soldier from the British Army came and took a group of us away to war. We were loaded onto a ship. Then we sailed for Gallipoli in Turkey, where the British and their friends were fighting the Turks. We were put to work carrying water to the soldiers who were fighting in the hills. It was a tough life for them. Nowhere was safe from bombs and bullets. For shelter the soldiers lived in trenches and in holes in the ground. The weather was either very hot with lots of flies or extremely cold. There was not a lot of nice food or fresh water, and the soldiers could not wash. Many of them became sick. Life for us donkeys was also hard. The cans of water were very heavy. Sometimes the Turkish soldiers fired bullets and artillery shells at us. It was scary and the noise was deafening. The worst of it was that we were always hungry, and if we were too slow or slipped and fell, some of the drivers would beat us. My driver was one of the worst. One day when I stumbled and spilt some water, he hit me again and again. I decided I would run away from this cruel man. I waited for a good time to escape. My chance came the next day. My driver had stopped to have a cup of tea, but forgot to tie me to a post. As he was leaning over to pour hot water into his cup, I kicked him with my hind legs. I ran as hard as I could, and my driver's yells grew fainter and fainter. I was free. I wandered around by myself the rest of the day. I grew hungry and tried to find some food, but there was only a bit of grass to eat. Night came and I was tired, cold and hungry. I missed the other donkeys. I woke early the next morning. I couldn't find any grass or plants to eat, so I tried seaweed. It was horrible, dry and salty. I started to walk back to where I had left my driver the previous day. He would beat me again, but it was better than starving. Then I saw a tall man coming towards me. I could see he was a soldier. Hello, little donkey. What are you doing here? His voice was kind. I didn't know what to do. Should I run? Here, little donkey. The man held out something to me. It was a biscuit with jam on. He stroked my back while I ate. You're just what I need. But I'll have to fatten you up first. He gave me another biscuit. When I had finished, the man picked up my rope and led me away. That was how I met Richard Alexander Henderson. He was a soldier with the New Zealand Field Ambulance. His job was to save the lives of soldiers who were sick or wounded. He had to move them away from the trenches to the beach at Anzac Cove. From there, the soldiers could be taken to a hospital ship. Each day, Richard and I set off looking for sick or wounded soldiers. When we found someone, Richard would have a good look at his injuries. He would take out a small glass container from his pack and apply iodine to each wound which helped to clean it. Then he would wrap the wound, wound in a bandage called a field dressing to stop bleeding and keep out dirt. Once all this had been done, it was my turn. Let's get you on the donkey, mate, Richard would say. With the soldier sitting on my back and leaning up against Richard, we slowly made our way down to Anzac Cove. Sometimes we had to rush across the open spaces because it was dangerous to go slow. In really bad places like Quinn's Post, we could only work at night. Often I felt something warm and sticky running down my back, blood from the soldiers. Richard would apply another field dressing. He had to stop the bleeding or the soldier might die. When we had delivered the soldier to Anzac Co, Richard would clean me with seawater before climbing back up to the battlefield. Richard and I were a good team. He looked after me and I was always well fed and he never hit me. In return I always tried to do my best for him. I was as gentle as I could be with the sick and injured men. I remember the day Richard gave me my name. He said, I can't keep calling you Donkey. How about Roland? I had a dog by that name. He was a good fellow too. I nuzzled Richard's shoulder. 
you like it? Rolly it is then. One day Richard fell sick. There was something wrong with his stomach. He had to leave Gallipoli to go to hospital. He stroked my head, tried to smile and said, Don't worry, Rolly. I'll be back to work with you soon. For nine days I kept working, and although the other New Zealand soldiers were good to me, I missed Richard. On the tenth day, Richard came back. Rolly, he said, I brought you something. And he gave me a big, juicy carrot. Once again, we were a team. We saved the lives of lots of soldiers. At the end of 1915, the British and their friends decided to leave Gallipoli. The soldiers were sad to leave because many of their companions had been killed there. However, their orders were to pack up and leave Gallipoli as quietly as they could. Richard was worried. Rolly, old chap, you can't come with me. I need to find you a good home. He left Gallipoli for two days. When he came back, he seemed much happier. About a week later, he said to me, Come on, let's go. One last trip to the beach. He took me down to the water and I was surprised when he led me onto a boat. We sailed to an island called Lemnos. At the town of Madras, a family stood waiting. Richard led me to them and gave my lead to a young boy. This is Rolly, Richard said. He's a great little worker and a wonderful friend. Look after him. With that, he patted my back wiped a tear from his eye and walked away. That was the last time I saw him. Though I missed Richard at first and was sad we had parted, my new family treated me well. I had to work on the farm, but the work was not hard. They gave me good food and kept me warm. The young children spent time with me. There were other animals to play with too. I'll always remember my time at Gallipoli, and I'll never forget my friend Richard Henderson from New Zealand. He was my donkey man.